Welcome everyone. Uh, here is Alessandro Di Mattia, Legal and Executive Officer at uh, Privacy Rules. Uh, today I'm joined by Andreas von Grebma from uh, the cybersecurity uh, firm uh, um, Wizlings Group, based in Switzerland but with branches all over the world. And uh, this is not the first time we, we meet with Andreas, uh, uh, but it's the fourth session that we have together. So I would like to thank Andreas for being with us today once more. And uh, Andreas, I, I would like to immediately start because as you know, privacy espressos are, are very short. In, in the last sessions we had, we have been speaking about how to break down silos by looking at the GRC and data protection holistically. And you showed us how to implement a, a practical approach on that. Today, we are going to change a bit, if I understood well, the topic of our discussion. And you would like to explain to us how organizations should approach artificial intelligence governance in a pragmatic way, right? So can you give us a bit of, of an overview on this? Yeah, thank you, Alexandra, for having me again. Topic today will be artificial intelligence. It's a, it's a hype. Everybody is uh, guessing how to handle this. So today, I, I brought uh, three points with me. The first one is a statement, so there is no artificial intelligence yet. The second one um, is also a statement, uh, artificial intelligence will never be fully be controlled. And the third one is basically artificial intelligence and your existing um, corporate governance, uh, corporate compliance framework, how to integrate and how to um, deal with that. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. And, and this Particularly, the first two points you mentioned seems very interesting and pretty provocative. So maybe you can give us a bit of a background on this. Yeah, so um, I often hear artificial intelligence, but if we're really honest, um, it's it's machine learning, which we, what we are talking about, not artificial intelligence. Because if you take the definition of intelligence, um, there are requirements in there like self-awareness, um, and I highlighted them, emotional knowledge, uh, creating critical thinking, and then that's not really fulfilled yet it will come in the future I'm, I'm sure but at the moment not because if that would be the case then a machine could already decide to commit suicide for example mm -hmm. okay and, and and that's that that, that somehow somehow make makes sense and, and and what about the other statement the one on the fact that ai can never be fully controlled yeah so i i thought about what is my um, opinion of um, can we control ai um, or not. And then I asked ChatGPT to give me in uh, 100 <laughs> words what the opinion of ChatGPT is um, about controlling art uh, artificial intelligence. Um, so I, I validated against my opinion, which must not be right, but it's, it's my opinion. And the uh, ChatGPT also um, is of somehow of the same opinion. So um, ChatGPT also thinks it's not fully controllable because of its complexity um, and so on. And if you think about uh, um, other things you like to control, like um, citizens, kids, your employees, customers, your your dog, you also never mm -hmm. really control them fully. Um, and the same is with IE. But what you do with with your with kids, citizens, and so on is you give them boundaries in which they can should move. And that's the same for artificial artificial intelligence. We should give them boundaries and, and keep it in that boundaries. That's that's super interesting. It's like having kind of kid to to take care of and uh, and to treat it uh, you know in the best possible way. But you know uh, that and that was interesting. But you promised also at the beginning that we would have been having a pragmatic approach for our viewers, in particular on how to address artificial intelligence and, and its challenges within organizations. So maybe you can also give us a bit of, you know, insights on this, uh, on this approach. Yeah. Um, so when we look at artificial intelligence or other new aspects, so we, the audience is mainly focusing on data privacy. So in the beginning of um, data privacy, GDPR, everybody was looking for a golden bullet. And the same is for artificial intelligence. So I would like to have a software or a vendor or a consultant who solves all the problems for me. Um, and that's not going to happen. Um, there is no one one size fits all thing. So we, we should get uh, rid of this idea. Okay. And and, and then I, I think that you have also more details on that, right? Yeah. So the good news is most of the companies have already an existing cybersecurity 
framework, a corporate governance, uh, a compliance framework. So the idea is um, that this existing framework, this existing processes and so on, um, could be leveraged and enhanced to get uh, RE under control within the boundaries, within um, the possibilities of getting it under control. What does that mean, for example, what needs to be changed in this um, corporate governance system um, to um, cover artificial intelligence? First, first of all, uh, roles and responsibilities needs to be adapted. So that means somebody needs to be responsible for artificial intelligence, but also in each role description, it's being a software developer or, or um, cyber security responsible or CISO, there needs to be outlined what their um, responsibilities are in terms of artificial intelligence. And also um, every company um, does capability management and you need to um, um, build capabilities in, in terms of um, artificial intelligence. So you need to build subject matter experts in um, specific areas like data privacy, legal, software development, and so on. <clears throat> then um, you should have an inventory already because that's, that's required by GDPR, ISO 27001 and many other standards so that you know what tangible and non-tangible assets you have. And ideally, you already have a classification and you classified your um, assets in the inventory. But the and classification be enhanced. So typically you have uh, confidentiality, integrity, availability, um, regulatory relevance. And now you should have maybe another flag for artificial intelligence relevance. So you can find out what data sets or what softwares are um, covered or touched by artificial intelligence. Your risk management process, even if it's good and, and uh, very state of the art, you should think about how you cover the threats of artificial intelligence in that risk management process. And maybe you should also think about having shorter intervals of reviewing risks, because normally we say 12 months. And um, here in some areas, you might go want to go on a quarterly or, or monthly review of risks because it's so, so um agile in, in that area. Development, so if you talk about product development or software development, um, you need to guide your developers of what they need to consider in terms of artificial intelligence, um, including in your product. And so your, your development handbook should, should cover also that topic in the future. Um, and the products, um, software or other products using software should be tested. So the test Procedures need to be adapted to cover artificial intelligence. Also, the monitoring um, needs to be considered. The log files, thresholds, and so on need uh, to cover artificial intelligence. And especially the incident management. So if you have incidents resulting from artificial intelligence misuse or failures, you want to have a special type of incidents, how to cover them, and you want to especially also drive the learnings from from that incident and uh, improve your, your other processes. Then your overall quality management system needs to consider artificial intelligence aspects. Uh, what is also important is liability, so um, which links to capability. So your legal team needs to be aware of, and your data privacy officer team need to be aware of what the implication of artificial intelligence are and what are the liability, which also, when we talk about data sets, GDPR and other laws, every data set you, which you store or keep needs to have a purpose. And maybe if artificial intelligence creates new data sets, you need, first of all, be aware of it. And then you have, have a decent purpose to store that data from individuals. So I think that's one of the key learnings for data privacy officers from this lesson. So what you, what you see is if you have an existing governance framework, a quality management system, you just need to enhance it to get the, this under control. Okay, uh, that, that, was, that was very interesting, uh, Andreas. Thanks a lot for introducing us and giving us those very uh, practical tips on how to manage that. We are ending up of our time, so I would like to thank you very much for uh, being with us today. And uh, uh, maybe uh, you can also share with us some more exact information on, on Whistlings. Anything you want to mention about this? But... Yeah, so Whistlings is, uh, as you see, globally distributed and we have experts for, for this topic. So if you want to address Address this, please reach out here to the contact details and you will be supported uh, from a specialist team.
Perfect, perfect. That's that's good to know and also to have a view on where are you uh, based. That is uh, very useful. So again, Andreas, it was a pleasure having you. Looking forward to have another Privacy Espresso with you uh, soon. Thanks for uh, your clear explanation and I look forward to see you and our audience that I thank again uh, very, very soon again. Bye, Andreas, and bye, everyone. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Bye-bye.